So first God told me, even though all these people hate me, I still love you. And I was trying to respect that and I still love God. Even mm. though I like sometimes talk back to him. So I want to like not do that anymore. And, yeah. and what did he tell you the first time that you said he talked to you? He called my name. He just said your name, huh? That's powerful, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Look That's at me, boy. Hey, your daddy loves you, and I want you to know if you know anything about daddy, you know I love Jesus, right? You know that, right? That your daddy loves Jesus, so I'm I'm glad that you're hearing from God, and you keep listening for him, okay? Yeah, he will, he will speak to you. He will encourage you, okay? That was only the first time I got to... So I just finished my daily Bible reading, uh, which is what I do every morning, and you should be doing that as well if you're a Christian. Uh, we should all be working towards finishing the Bible once a year. Uh, typically what I do is I'll get through the whole Bible once and then hit the New Testament again. So I try to read the New Testament twice in a year uh, and then go back to Genesis and work my way through to Revelations. And so that's what we need to be doing as Christians, as believers. You need to be allotting some time in your morning to scripture reading. I'm not talking about having to read 10 chapters. OK, you can read two or three chapters, but you need to be spending at least 10 to 20 minutes OK, alone in the word each and every morning. And I just finished my reading and I'm in Zechariah and I'm glad because I'm close to the New Testament. I'm almost finished with the Old Testament. But this morning, what I read was Zechariah 13, 3. And this stood out uh, not because I, I first saw this video from Marcus, but it, it just stood out to me. And it was something that I marked in scripture. I logged on to YouTube and I saw this video by Marcus and this 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 verse in context has everything to do with what's going on in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and read the verse. Zechariah 13, 3 through 5. Zechariah 13, 3. It shall come to pass that if anyone still prophesies, then his father and mother who begot him will say to him, you shall not live, you shall not live, because you have spoken lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and mother who begot him shall thrust him through when he prophesies. Verse 4. And it shall be in that day that every prophet will be ashamed of his vision. When he prophesies, they will not wear a robe of coarse hair to deceive, but he will say, I am no prophet. I am a farmer for a man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. Now that man, that man repented and stopped telling lies by way of false prophecy out of fear from God, out of fear of God. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Now, it's interesting to note that false prophets use lies to profit. Marcus Rogers is earning a profit from his false prophecies. OK, so he's no different than a Creflo Dollar or a T.D. Jakes that they do the same thing. Now, what I want to do now is I want to examine what his son said in the video. OK, and I, and I got two two points and this is word for word. And I want to deal with what he said. Uh, now, the first point, the first thing the son said was first. And this is word for word. First, God told me that even though the people, these people hate me, I still love you. OK, the, the boy says. God told me that even though these people hate me, I still love you. Now, this is what angers me about this whole thing. Marcus missed a great opportunity to both honor God and if he so choose to give his son a segment on his channel that other children his age could watch and learn from. OK, you don't need to lie and say that God told you when it's already in the word of God. See, that's the that's the problem. Instead of instead of having his son read from the open Bible, from a, from the word of God, from having his son Instead of having his son doing it the biblical way, he did it the unbiblical way by saying that he heard an audible voice, that God specifically spoke to him, that he heard God's voice. OK, you don't you don't have to do that. That's wrong. OK, it's in scripture and I'll prove it. His son said, God told me that even though these people hate me, I still love you. Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. It's in the Bible. The second thing his son said, word for word, I love God, even though sometimes I talk back to him. Now, we can use this and apply this to a disobedient child in regards to their parents. Leviticus 19.3, every person must respect his mother and father. Ephesians 6.2, honor your father and mother. This, this would have been a great segment for his child or his son to speak to other kids his age in regards to respecting their parents or just to respect God and his authority. 
You don't have to lie and say that God spoke to me. I heard a voice from heaven and I've got this. I call it the Moses relationship, the face to face. It's not that's not what it is, but that's what it's likened to. Because if you're saying that God is speaking directly to you, there are men who are well respected in the reformed community, men that have an amazing track record, outstanding men of the Lord who God doesn't speak to. John MacArthur, God doesn't speak to him. God doesn't speak to Paul Washer. God doesn't speak to Vody Bauckham. But your son and you have this special connection or special relationship in which God speaks to you. You actually hear his voice. No, you don't. You're lying. You're a liar. You're doing this for ad revenue. OK, you're doing this to appease an audience. OK, of people who want the same thing you want. And it's not God. OK, it's the, it's the Burger King thing. I, I want it my way. Claim to be a follower of Jesus, but you, you, you blaspheme. You twist up scripture to fit your own w wicked and demonic narrative. So, listen, unless there is repentance, much like this man that I just uh, read from, Zechariah 13, you will perish. You will go the same way. This is not a game, and, and God is not mocked, okay? He's not mocked. And so, what we see here is a, a lack of fear. That's what happens when there is a lack of fear, okay? When there is no fear of God, this is what you get. 